Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. I'd like to say peace and blessings from the Most High and His glorious Son and all praises for the Ruach or Hakadesh. Gives us leadership and guidance. Leadership and guidance. First thing I want to say, I want to say this, is that I got one my, my, one of my brothers out there. I hope that he uh, chimes in so that he can uh, hear it. So I'm going to tag a few people. I'm going to tag a few people. Tag a few people. Tag a few people. I'm grateful and glad to be alive on this morning. Oh, okay. This afternoon, I hear a noise in the background. It was my uh, all classes high school reunion. All classes high school reunion. And I want to say this, because there is a confession that may be brought forward. Scripture tells us to remember the Sabbath, to keep it holy. And sometimes there are things that jump up that we can understand that. And we end up doing something anyway. So we thank the Most High for Yehoshua HaMashiach that covers us in his blood. We willfully sin against the Father. We know the scripture says that it is lawful to do good even on the Sabbath. Some things could be classified as a good deed. One of my contributions to my high school is that I will play the music. Uh, I don't know nothing that'll be too much of a reunion of no sort without the music. Uh, that's the contribution that I have to make. Nevertheless, this is still the Sabbath. It is still the Sabbath. I don't consider it a day of work, but it is a day of work because I am working. Lugging equipment and everything else. So, with that being said, we want to also be mindful of our brothers and sisters to have a desire in their heart to honor the Most High on His Holy Sabbath. But because of this kingdom and work-related issues, they are unable. And we want to thank the Most High and His Son for that, to be covered in His blood when we are unable to do the things that He instructed us to do. So, and for my brothers and sisters, we want you guys to be encouraged. I got a story that I want to tell. And it's going to show the damage that's being done to our people on all fronts. Our class reunion started with a meet and greet on yesterday afternoon. And yeah, yesterday afternoon I played the music. And then afterwards, they decided they would get together and go out and have a drink. What they did, that was and so I went to, and while I was in there, I stumbled across one of my sisters. <laughs> and she said to me, she said, that head wrap you got on, I was like, yeah. She said, I know you're Israelite because I see your friends. I said, blood bought into the death. Then she said, <laughs> you know you ain't supposed to have your head covered. 
<laughs> I said, really? <laughs> she said, you know you ain't supposed to be praying or prophesying with your head covered. So I said, do it look like I'm in here praying or prophesying? <laughs> And my sister would not let, she would not leave me alone. She would not leave me alone. You know, you ain't got no business coming in this nightclub with no fringe is on. What are you going to do about your sisters in here? Look at how they dress. Look at how they dress. They ain't even got no clothes on. And you, what are you going to do about that? <laughs> I said, I said, I ain't going to do nothing about it. <laughs> Uh, hold on one second. Well, this is funny. What's up, cuz? Yeah, what's going on? Nothing, man. I'm I'm at the place, man, trying to get set up. You already there? Yeah, what you gonna do is you gonna come out Raytown Road and you're gonna go straight till you can't go no more, and then you're gonna keep going straight, and you'll be here. I said you're going to go out Raytown Road and you're going to go straight till you can't go no more and then you keep going straight. Uh -huh. And you'll be here. It's a straight shot. Ain't no turning. Okay. All right. Okay, I do apologize for that. I do apologize. There he is. That's Brother Chris Hayes right there. That's who I was looking to see. Brother Chris Hayes, I wanted you to know but from that video. See, my brother Chris Hayes, he was amongst one of the first people to respond. And uh, he said, uh, and I hope you don't mind me sharing this story, but he said, uh, Elder, I got I got $30. I was going to, going to the grocery store and get my kids some stuff and, and buy this and buy that, he said, and and whatever I got left, I'm going to send it. And he did. And uh, I told him, I said, you don't ever have to feel bad because it's never uh, a, about the amount as much as it is you having a desire in your heart. And then I read a post later where somebody said, well, I had this star and I didn't know it was pagan. So I'm taking it to the pawn shop. But as I made the video, I was reaching for a lot of things that people argue about. And and one of them that I pulled out was that star. And I want my brother to understand that I didn't pull that out based on your comment that you made. You understand what I'm saying? And you can have have stars and you can have all those things. The Bible says that you make no graven images that you bow down and worship to. You see, I wore crucifixes on, on gold chains and all that for all my life, you know what I mean? And, but you know what? I come to understand that when I understand what the crucifix was all about, I put it away. But the Father had mercy because we didn't make those things to bow down and worship them. You see, Roman Catholics do that stuff. They bow down and they worship their stuff and they kiss the cross and they kneel at it and they do all of that. So I want my brother to know that... Uh, and so we, he thought he had to say something wrong. Did I do something wrong and say, oh, oh, no, you ain't did nothing wrong, brother. You've been a blessing. Now, back to the story at hand. So the sister ran up one side, and when I seen the condition that she was in in her thinking, because I couldn't talk to her, I said, sister, you don't have no idea. You don't have no idea at all. You ain't got no business coming in this club wearing no fringes. You a king. You ain't some. <laughs> she wanted me to come in there and, and convert the whole club. <laughs> she wanted me to immediately come in there like a tyrant and start dealing with the sister that has short skirts on. And, and I, oh, I said, boy. But now, at the end of it, this is what happened. She said, yeah, I'm with... I'm with such and such and such and such. She said, I'm with ICIU. I said, oh, oh, okay. Oh, that I see where the problem is there. I said, boy, I'm telling y'all better, y'all better, the camp's gonna kill y'all. Yeah. Oh, oh man, she about cuss me out. You don't disrespect no camp. You don't. I said, sister, I ain't disrespecting no camp because I got plenty of brothers that are associated with the camps. 
You know what I mean? I serve the most high. I don't serve no man. But the point that I'm making is this. We have to be very careful who we sitting up with and who we allow to teach us. I said, I don't care what kind of sin people is caught up in. Have you forgot that while we were in our worst condition, that Hamashiach sacrificed his life for us? This young sister did not care about anything that I was saying. She had a judgmental spirit that was out of this world. I would not bite back or harm my sister, but that's what I kept bringing her back to. I said, I'm your brother and you my sister, you know? We shouldn't treat each other like that. And it was a trip. So I gave her my, I said, I'm gonna give you something if you can receive it, take a look at it. So I gave her my Facebook page and the YouTube page. And hopefully she'll ever gravitate toward that. Am I saying something bad about my sister? No. Our sister was a beautiful, beautiful queen. She was beautiful. I mean, she was pretty. Uh, she was beautiful. But her mentality was corrupted. And it made her very ugly. Is that me saying something bad about it? No, I'm not saying nothing bad about her. What she said, what she said to me, well, you know, this is the Sabbath. You ain't supposed to be. I said, you right, sister, you right. And I received that. This is the Sabbath. But in my mind, I said, but you have no idea where I'm coming from or what I'm doing. You don't even know why I showed up in this place. You understand what I'm saying? But I said all of that to say this. At the end of the day, you can know as much scripture as you want to know. But if you don't have love for your brother and your sister, everything else you do is a waste of time. You see, because all of us have the capacity to fall into some type of sin at any given minute. But love covers a multitude of faults and shortcomings. It is the hurdle that Hamashiach climbed over when he sacrificed his life for us, when he spilt his blood and gave up the ghost. And before he gave up the ghost, while he was agonizing, hanging on a tree like our forefathers, like our ancestors, hanging in a tree, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. This sister didn't know me from a can of paint. She couldn't discern what was in my heart, and she not, don't have no idea what kind of love that I have for her. <clears throat> so there are many of us that are going to go through these situations. We go through them with our friends. We go through them with our families, you know, and you're often misunderstood. But sometimes you just have to humble yourself and say that. Father, not only forgive them because they know not what they do, but forgive me because I could become a stumbling block for one that is weak in the faith. And by that standard, I had to take a, take a, 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 a stand of total humility and tell her, yes, you're right, sister, you're right. This is Sabbath. The sun has failed and it's nighttime. This is the Sabbath. I should be home resting. And you're right. Maybe I shouldn't be in here. You understand? Because it calls one to stumble. Does the Lord forgive us and have mercy on us? Of course he do. But that's why it's so important that we forgive one another and have mercy on each other at the same time. Because you can't say that I'm your brother and you treat me bad. And then somebody that's an enemy, you can treat them good. That don't work like that. With that being said, I want to say Shabbat Shalom to all of my brothers and sisters. The Bible tells us, confess our faults one to another that we may be healed. Every last person on the planet has a struggle in some type of area. Every person on the planet have a reason to go into their closet and get on their knees and ask the Most High to forgive them for something. But the Most High is saying, okay, I will do that. But if you want to be healed, be humble enough to confess your faults to your brothers and your sisters. Because it is through their prayers, when they start praying for you, then I will heal them. Henceforth, I say all that to bring you to this point right here. And I want to thank the Most High and His glorious Son, Hamashiach, for being able to use His people to show up in His other people.
people's lives and you show up in somebody's life and they never even see you only thing that they see is that god have made a way out of no way and for those of our brothers and sisters that have had a heart and a genuine spirit to share what the father have given them we have three sisters we have three of our sisters and there are more to come that can declare today with their mouths that can confess with their mouths praise the most high because he made a way out of no way and it didn't come from the auntie that they can see or the uncle that they can touch or the mother that they can talk on the phone and it didn't come from the children that's living in their house but it came from total strangers that they never seen in their life before it just showed up in their life bow and the father made them see. I got you. I can provide for you. And they don't have nobody to thank for it but him. And so the Bible says, let your good works show before men. And they'll give your father in heaven glory. And when we collectively unite ourselves in the spirit and move on behalf of one of our brothers and sisters, they never see us. Only thing they see is the father's provision showing up. And I wanted to come on here today just to declare that before my brothers and sisters and thank you and encourage you because our sisters are rejoicing. They were broken yesterday, but they are rejoicing today. They were crying tears yesterday, but they are reaping joy this morning because they see the father show up in their life. They did not see people. The people that they probably thought that they could depend on never showed up. But what they seen is they seen the all see, all knowing, invisible most high show up like a champion riding in on a white horse to be a blessing, whatever it is that they needed. And it is all because of you. It is all because of you. And so we want to thank and praise the Most High that our sister that has smaller needs, their needs were met immediately. Now, our sister that has the bigger need, because as we said, my little cousin embraced me on that Monday as we come and collectively get together every Monday in Bible study. Said, Cousin, I'm graduating on Thursday. I'm graduating on Thursday. Did anybody know that bullets was going to come flying out of nowhere and attack that young lady? It didn't know. And now her mother had the responsibility to nurse her back to health. And so her time at work has been cut in half. And she don't have no more PTO time. And she got to go to work. And this, these type of things, these type of circumstances happen. So she had more of a major need. Now, we know that we can't meet the whole sum, grand sum total of the needs of that people have. Some needs go far past that. So we don't deal with that. But what we do look at is we're looking at the Father being able to use us in the way to where he can use us to show up in people's lives. He's going to show up in their life irregardless because he got a thousand ways. And he got a, he, like he told Isaiah, he said, look, you crying about that like you're the only one. He said, I got six, I got six, seven thousand prophets that ain't never bowed their knee to God. We're not the only people that the father have to use, but he desires to use us. And when he use us and we move like that in the spirit. And I want to thank my brothers and sisters. And just like I said, whatever was done for them. If it happened to anybody that's reading this post, anybody that's on these videos, anybody that's corresponding with me, if it hits your house and happened to you, I will come on here with the same campaign and intensity as if it was one of my own. And I feel no less, uh, no less zealous about these, our brothers and sisters, than I felt about what I call my own son, young general. I don't feel, I feel the same way because the circumstances are the same no matter who they facing. It's just that many times you don't, you know, it's not real to you until it hits your house. So I want to thank my brothers and sisters. I want to thank all of us that, all of us that collectively came together. This has truly been a time that the Most High is smiling on his people for what they have gotten done. Yep. And I thank you. Thank you all for your contributions. Thank you all for your contributions. And as we stated before, those monies that have been received, they will go directly where they're supposed to go to lift our brothers and our sisters up. Now, we'll take what, what we raised in that PayPal account, and then we're going to take it, and we're going to send that to uh, my cousin. And then I would ask that everybody that contributed, that, and those that had a desire but just didn't have it, you see, the Father used your desire that you had in your heart, but you didn't have it. But he caused your brother 
to be able to do what you was desiring to do. So we all tied in and they're together. And it's a blessing when you have a desire and can't do something. The Father honors that as though you could do it. So I wanted to come on here and encourage everybody and encourage my brothers and sisters that if it was in my power and you have a need, you know, just say it. A closed mouth can't get fed. Just say it. Just say it. Because it's somebody yesterday. It's going to be somebody else today. It's going to be somebody else tomorrow. But eventually, it's going to all come full circle. And eventually, it's going to be my turn. And the Bible says, cast thy bread upon the waters. And after many days, thou shalt find it. You see, you're throwing your bread. Your bread is your substance. Your bread is your gifts. Your bread is your influence, your kindness, your time, your talent, your money, your resources. He said, cast it out there upon the waters, and the waters represent the people. Share those things that the Most High bless you with, with the people. And after many days, when you come into a place the way you have a crisis, he said, after many days, those things that you cast out there, you will find them coming back. He said, after many days, you will find it again. It'll be the very thing, the very thing that you did for your brother, that 10 years down the line, you'll find yourself in a situation. And that thing that you did will start gravitating back towards you. You see? So I want to just say thank you. Encourage you, brothers and sisters. And, uh, and let us pray for our younger brothers and sisters that's coming into the faith. We need to really go into some serious warfare in prayer where our camp brothers are concerned. Because our camp brothers are releasing such hatred. And you know what the sad thing is? The hatred in that sister's heart was released on me while she was sitting in the lap of a heathen. And so eventually she started getting on my nerves. And I said, well, wait a minute. You mean to tell me that you can be that judgmental with me and you don't have no idea where I just came from or who I am or you don't have no idea what's in my heart and you can be that judgmental with me, but you over here lap dancing with a heathen? I said, so you're going to curse me out and then you're going to go and love a heathen, huh? That broke my heart. That broke my heart, but I don't hold it against her. That's my sister. I'm hoping that she accept my friend request on Facebook or send me a friend request, and she'll see some of these videos, and then she'll get an understanding. And she can get mad, and she ain't never got to like me again. Or she can come to her senses and come to understand that I'm her brother. So that's what that is. So I just like to say uh, thank you all once again. Thank you all. I'm not going to ask anybody to send anything else uh we have uh raised close to a thousand dollars and my cousin came by house yesterday and i had some money for her. i hadn't checked the paypal account but i did let her know i said we got some of our brothers and sisters and they are new in the faith and this is one of the ways that the devil attacks us when we knew in the faith he let calamities happen and then and try to turn you away. I said, cousin, hold your head up high. Hold your head up high. The father, the father going to use this situation to show you he got you. And all I was praying, I was like praying, please, please, father, please, just let some of my brothers and sisters, just let them, just let them do something. Because when I can give her what our brothers and sisters have done, when I can put that in an envelope and give it to her and put on there that this it's the father moving through his people that you ain't never seen before in your life. She will know that it was the father and, and she can start understanding what's happening and have some faith built to know that the father's promise is that he will provide for his people. But it is difficult when you are faced with the situation and you call on your mother and you call on your father, you call on your aunties, your uncles, your friends, your cousins, and none of the people that you expected to show up, show up. None of them. And that has a way of breaking your heart and makes you feel like you're in a hopeless place. But that is where the father the need for us to be because when he bless you he don't want to share his glory with nobody when he bless you he want all the praise all the glory and all the honor and I'm and I'm just so grateful that 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 prayer that got asked when I just look at the PayPal just a minute ago it had nine hundred and two dollars in it 
It had nine hundred and two dollars in it, and when I coupled the nine hundred two dollars, uh, and not saying this to shine no light on myself, when I coupled the nine hundred and two dollars along with the 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 hundred and sixty five dollars that I had available to give, that brings the total up into one thousand, uh, one thousand sixty five dollars, and that is a blessing to be able to do that. And that is a blessing because you know what it would be like if you was in a crisis and somebody showed up with an envelope and handed you a thousand dollars. You see, that is the father using his people to get his will done. Somebody had to be the foot soldier. Somebody had to bring it to the forefront. And that's why I'm telling you that when we ha we got to get used to taking care of each other. Because if we don't take care of each other, you know what? They cutting off people's food stamps. They cutting off Section 8. They going to cut off a whole lot of things because they going to box Israel in. And if we don't start practicing how to take care of each other now, we in trouble. We got my brother, y'all down on there, on the line right there, you know. And he said, well, look at here, brother. I got land down here. I got some land down here. You know what I'm saying? He said, man, I saw what I had. I bought me a fifth wheel and built me a porch on the side of it. And he'll show that thing to you. He said, I got land. He said, I got land down here because if the time comes to where our brothers and sisters have to leave the city, you have to leave the city. Hey, no, we can get we can get we can get 30 houses down here on this land. We can get some campers and we can get some whatever it is. You see, the father is grooming his people for this reason right here. To have a heart to be able to assume the responsibility for your brothers and sisters when he puts you in a position to get it done we're gonna we're gonna be the only thing that we have to preserve each other and so i want to come on here and i just want to lift y'all up lift y'all up lift y'all up and on this sabbath just want to just say hallelujah most high most high heavenly father we thank you thank you on this on this most holy sabbath day this is this, that we are blessed to see the sun shining again we're breathing air we can touch things we can touch it is a wonderful thing. And I pray for everybody that gave. Pray that you would double and triple your promises that you would give seed to the sower. That he will come again rejoicing and bringing his seeds with him. You will continuously, continuously fill his bag up because he is willing to go out like a sower and spread those seeds that you give him amongst amongst the world. We thank you for that. We thank you for that. And if it was not for those sores, Father, we would be in trouble. We would be in trouble because we wouldn't have nobody else to depend on. We can't depend on the Arab. We can't depend on the white man. We can't depend on African. We can't depend on no nation that have been oppressing us and diminishing us. But we can depend on each other. And it may be something that you have to teach us to do. It may be something that your spirit has to go in there and change our heart or fix our mind or change our thinking. But whatever it is, it needs to be done. We ask these blessings in the name of the one who sacrificed his life, hung, bled, and died, that we might have a right to come boldly before the throne and make our requests known. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom, brothers and sisters.